What, what has four thumbs, thumbs and thinks we're weird? We do! Hello and welcome to another episode of Kitty and Panda Sewing Class. This I'm Panda! <laughs> and I'm Kitty. I hope you remember. This time we're going to be doing a Renaissance Fair costume. Uh, we're going to be making the top. And I can show this a little bit later earlier. Um, we're going to be make, learn, teaching you how to sew with elastic and bias tape. This pattern particularly calls for a single fold bias tape about a half an inch. And you can see all that information on the package. It's really easy to find and sew with. So for today we're going to need our fabric, pins of course, our tracing wheel, and instead of tracing paper I have this new stuff. It's called uh, Mark Be Gone Tracing Paper. It's kind of like um, remember those Crayola markers that we used to get when we were kids and you pull out the, the ink like pad? The end off and pull out the little felt thing. The ink pad, basically that's what this is. is it's just a big pad of marker ink that uh, disappears after 72 hours. I find it works much better than tracing paper. Okay, so we're also going to need thread. Ribbon. Yes, because we are going to be putting ribbon in this. And of course our scissors. And then we already looked up ahead and we got our pattern pieces cut out. And we're going to be doing this a little bit uh, faster because I'm pretty sure you all remember how to get your pattern pieces out, hopefully, and how to cut your pattern pieces out. We're going to do just maybe a quick review showing you how to do cut out one piece. We'll probably do the sleeves, right? Yeah, we'll show you how to cut out the sleeves on this. And of course, we will uh, be making adjustments uh, like we usually do because we are taller. Remember that. So the pattern does need to be come out a little bit longer so it'll fit us. Me. So it'll fit me. This is my run for costume. Yes. Again, we're making something for Panda. We make right. stuff for you all the time. We just never put it on video. It's because I'm usually doing it by myself. Okay. We'll be uh, right back with showing you how to cut out the sleeve. Right, welcome back. We're on to the sleeves. We're going to be doing something a little different. Now, in previous time we did uh, this with fabric folded. This time our sleeves are too wide for us to do that. As you can see, uh, our fabric is got the right, you see how it's dark? That means it's the right side up. That means the good side of the fabric is facing up. And also you can see the width on there, how it figures in with this fabric. We have two pattern pieces, that we, we same pattern piece, we have to cut it twice. Right side up, right side down. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look and as you can see I have it laid out. I don't have it pinned yet, but I will be doing that shortly. I'm pretty sure you guys remember, I'll show you a couple of pins. We do not have to make any adjustments to the length of this as um, the sleeve is designed to be long and gathered at, at the wrist for puffing. So it's going to look puffy. <laughs> um, but that's about it. Uh, we'll show you, I'll show you a couple of pins. So I'll make sure that it's nice and flat. And since we have to cut two of them, we want to get as close to the edge as possible so we have plenty of fabric left over for the other sleeve. And also make sure you find your green line, which is this line here. And make sure you want to get as close to following the green line of the fabric. And it can be really hard, so I'm going to be doing my best to eyeball it. And we're pretty straight here. Alright. I believe I told you last time to uh, make sure you leave some space so that you can do your cutting or drawing out the pattern. And it's a placement line, okay. I'm going to show you just a couple of pins and then I'm going to finish cutting this out. And keep, remember to keep smoothing the pattern and fabric as you go. Alright, now we got all of our pieces cut out. We're going to be working on our sleeve. First step is to take out our bias tape, unravel it nicely, and make sure you get all of the loops and twists out of the way. And we're going to be laying it flat. Now, 
you're gonna be looking at me like, oh, wait, kitty, we had the we cut our our sleeves up with the fabric right side up. Not to worry, it doesn't make too big of a difference. As you can see, it looks the same either side because we're using muslin. It is no patterns on it. It's just straight up one piece of color, one color cloth on both sides. Muslin is still 100% cotton, but it's a nice lightweight fabric. And since our Renaissance fair that we're going to is going to be in August, which happens to be one of the hottest months of the year, we want to make sure that we have lightweight, breathable clothes. Okay, now I tra we have our placement line here, and we're going to kind of line it up in the middle. And I will warn you, this is a very much a pain in the butt to do. You kind of make a little bend in there, fold it in half a little bit, but that's okay because it'll straighten right back out. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the placement line on both this one here at the top. And I'm going to do the other sleeve. Are you having fun, Panda? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go do the other sleeve, and I'll be right back to show you the next step. All right. As you can see, I have everything pinned up. I have left a little bit extra because I may not, it's very hard to get this all nice and even and flat. So this way, as it comes around, I don't fall short if I get too close over here instead of being right on the edge. I might end up way over here. So to safeguard against that, cut a little bit extra to allow yourself some wiggle room, so to speak. Now with this, because we have to make sure we be able to get elastic in here, we're going to want to sew as close to the edge as possible. Now we're not be able gonna not gonna be able to go very fast, but you want to get it in there. and line it up. Um, I don't know how well we're going to be able to see, show this. How close can you get, Panda? Oh, hold on. Okay. Okay. Can you see the little marks? Yep. There's three of them. One, two, and three. That shows posi that will line up with the needle. I have the needle current setting is for the middle, so I'm going to line up the edge of my bias tape. <laughs> Sorry, I had to think a moment. I'm going to add, uh, line up the edge of my bias tape to just past this line, because that's where the needle is going to fall. We want, remember, we want to stick as close to this line as possible. All right. Now, if you can see closely. I finished with the sewing the, bi the bias tape and I have two lines of sewed it on each edge so that it makes a casing. Now you're going to say, well, but Kitty, we have purple line through there. Like I said, this is the ink that we used for tracing disappears within 72 hours. It hasn't been very long. So that will, we won't have to worry about that. But as long as this, X, this box right here stays, we should be good to go because we have to sew this ribbon into a nice pretty bow. Wait, I can't find the ribbon. There it is. This pretty ribbon right here into a bow and right on the uh, right over this square. But that's not for a little while yet. Our next step in the pattern wants us to cut elastic and stick it through here and here and then put it in but I've done this shirt before and I've learned that it is very hard to sew the hem down here when this is all scrunched up with elastic so we're going to do a step a little bit backwards here and put the hem in I'll go ahead and take care of that and I'll see you for the next step Panda's turn. Now we're going to thread the elastic in there. So we have this neat little, what is this called? An elastic guide. An elastic guide. So we have these two little itty bitty slots right here. And we are going to thread the elastic through. And you might need a tweezers. I can get it. Like that. And then we thread it through the bottom hole. 
So we have our elastic threaded on to our little elastic guide. Give it a touch. Show them how it doesn't, doesn't come out very well. It doesn't come out. So then, in between the bias tape, bad lighting, and the uh, material, I'm going to stick it in between the little hole, like so, and thread it through. And hopefully your elastic goes in. It takes a little bit to shove it through and a little bit of finger working. Aha! <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and you move it just like that. And it will start to bunch up because you don't want it to be perfectly the same length, so you want it to be bunched up a little bit anyway. Kitty's come to join. Hi kitty! Now, if you don't have an elastic guide, you can always use a safety pin. Uh, be careful, make sure you set it back far enough, because otherwise it, the safety pin can pull through with all the tugging that you're doing, uh, pull through your elastic and you can lose it. But we'll let Panda continue here. It looks like she's almost done. There we go. Ta da! What we're going to do, since this is going to be her wrist, we're going to remove it from the plastic guide. And actually, I'm going to bring this back down just a little bit. Then you take your safety pin afterwards and secure it. so that we don't lose it at that end. And that's secured both through the elastic and the material so it stays in one spot. Yep. Alright. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which sleeve it is, but we'll use this one as an example. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's go the other way. Inside out. So we want this. You want to tighten it so that it's tight, but not cutting off circulation. Circulation. How's that? That feels good. Not too tight. Still yeah. got some stretch room. Right. All right. And hold that. We'll take another safety pin. And okay. secure. Again, through the elastic and the material, not just the elastic. See what I mean though, when we did the hem before, finished hem on this before, because otherwise this would have been a real pain in the butt to do the hem once we got the elastic in. You will repeat this step of elastic and putting the elastic in through all guides that we did, all bias tapes. So we have two for each sleeve, so that's a total of four times. The second one that we do will be after I secure this with sewing. I'm going to use the sewing machine and just run through um, a seam right at the edge here. Oops, sorry. Right at the edge here just to secure it so we can reuse the safety pins because I only have two of them. I know I should have more. And we'll get in, we'll get the top. And for that part, we'll want to measure Panda's upper arm because that's where it's going to sit. Remember spinning, handy dandy pins. Move the machine, and let's take a look at our instructions. It says with. Right sides together, pin each sleeve to armhole edges of front and back. So we have to get our front and back pieces. Match up our tabs. Go 
golden pins. And pin. Now you've seen us do this before, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin. Maybe one more in there. Keep the edges as close to each other as possible. Remember, always keep right sides together. This opens up this way, so right sides together. Otherwise, you're gonna find your seams on the outside. Unless we're going for that look, in which case we're not. Make sure you're doing it right. I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning these together, and we'll be right back. I'm gonna also sew them, and we'll take you to the next step. After pinning and sewing, we'll be right back. All right, the next step here does tell us to, um, we had to double stitch, so we had to stitch once around and then stitch again to provide uh, extra security so that the seams doesn't come out, because this is going to be right at the arms. And it, what the next step after that was to trim it close, so that's what I've done and finishing up here. You don't want to get too close to the edge, otherwise you're going to cut into your, your stitching. But you want to get as close as you can without doing damage. And it did say that we want to um, press our seams towards the sleeves. And then once we do that, we will be pinning our sides together. So we want to get the sleeve out of the way. And we'll be pinning our sides together. So we'll be making our... Maybe if I go this way, that'll look better. Find our edges, edges pin all the way around. We'll make our sleeve and our sides. And then we'll have our shirt and be ready for the final hemming and we'll show you how to put in the last bit of elastic because this is going to be a little set a little different we're just going to finish off we're going to create a casing like we did for elastic here around the neck but we're going to open one side and i'll show you how to do that when when we get to that point and then we're going to be able to fold it over in on itself so that you don't see the casing and it pulls it in and you can get your elastic in. I'll explain that a lot easier as I can show you how to do it. I'm going to go ahead and iron. Iron our seams towards the sleeves and I'll do the pinning and sewing. We'll be back to show you how to do the neck. Okay. While she's pinning and sewing stuff together, I figured we might as well take ribbon and turn it into a bow. That looks something like this. Now this is not as easy as you would think because tying a bow is really easy when you get to tie something around your finger or tie your shoelaces or something like that, tie that in a bow. That's easy. But we're taking this little piece of ribbon. It's only 27 inches long and attempting to turn it into this. Now bear with me, I tried this and it happened at a whim. I don't know if it'll work again. All right, so what I did was I took my ribbon and folded it in half and then made a little heart. Now that you can see that, there we go, a little heart. And press it together. And then it's kind of like when you're tying your shoelaces and some of you might still do this and stay, instead of taking one, piece one end and going over the other we're going to do like the bunny ears Make this just a little bit longer and kind of fold over make a little hole tuck it in and then pull it out the other side and try to make sure that they're even see I have one side that looks a little bit bigger than the other so I'm gonna pull and so your knot might be just a little bit loose, but that's okay. If one ribbon is end is longer than the other, don't worry, because we're going to trim it off at a diagonal. But there we go. So we have this. That still looks too big. 
is about what we're going for. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit loose, but we're going to sew that onto the sleeve. So it'll be nice and tight onto the sleeve. Okay. I hope you got that because I really can't do it again. So now we have two ribbons to go on the sleeve like that. It'll be pretty. Of course, it won't be on this sleeve. It'll be pretty. See how it's a, when we say single fold, that means it's folded only once on each side here. Mm -hmm. With this, what, what I was describing before in the directions is it wants us to open one edge up and iron it open because we're going to be lining it up with With the top of our neck pretty much we're going to come down just probably just a little bit so that when we fold when it folds back we fold back over and we create a nice clean seam and casing for our elastic now I'm gonna go ahead and iron this open all right so I have it all opened up on that one side. See, we still got our fold here. We still got our fold here. We have the one open side. We're going to take it so that the good side, or at least let's say we'll take it, we'll make it so that the fold side is out. We're going to want to put this on the right side of the fabric. I have turned the shirt right side out. As you can see, seam here. Seam, not here. Uh, or edge here, whatever. And we're going to, I did a pretty good job of keeping everything nice and neat and lined up at the top. So I'm just going to line this up right at the top. I want to start where I made one of my, my seams. And I'm going to start right at the top there. And more pinning. Yes, more and more pinning. I'm going to, I'm not going to have you sit through the whole recording of me pinning. As that's going to take about 10 minutes to, for me to do this. So it should take you approximately about the same amount of time. Once we're done, I'm going to go ahead and sew this. And when we're sewing, we want to make sure we stay inside of that fold line that we have opened up. So you want to stay close right in the middle between the edge and that fold line when you're sewing it around. Okay, we'll be right back once I've completed that for the next, next step, the pinning and the sewing. Okay, so now we have it all, all sewn out. Okay, two in. And now we want to make sure we flip it to flip it back over. We're going to want to flip it to the wrong side again. What we're going to do is we're going to follow that fold and just kind of fold it this. We're actually going to pin by holding it in a good spot. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my hands are going to move. So we're just going to pin it. Or you can just go around and iron it, but in this case I find pinning is probably going to be just as quick. And you don't have to put too many pins in either. It's great to have that extra, that nice little fold that's already in there so you don't have to worry about, where am I going to fold? I will show you in just a moment. Let me get a couple more pins in. And so you should end up looking like that. We're going to sew along this edge right here as close to the edge as possible so we can make space for our elastic again. Yay, elastic! Now I know we're making a Renaissance type top here and they didn't have elastic back in the Renaissance era. They had string, but we're a little bit more modern and elastic's a lot more fun and easier to use and a little bit more comfortable too. And a lot easier, well, like I said, easier to use because otherwise making your own string is a payment in the butt. I can tell you that. Uh, very tiny, almost like when we made these, these um, fine hems here, finished hems. It's like making them like this, except you're going to take um, 
I'm gonna use your bow, Jody. Panda, I'm gonna use your bow. It's like taking this, uh, taking the fabric, folding it in half like that bias tape, and then folding it in half again, and then sewing. By hand. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this, and jo Panda and I will go ahead and put the elastic in, and we'll show you the finished product. We'll be back. All right, here it is. The got product it. is finished. We got the bows. I did a hem at the bottom. And yes, I know it's panda shirt, but I'm modeling it because she's not wearing the right kind of uh, underclothes. Sorry. And so it's supposed to sit off the shoulders, and as you can see, it's definitely not mo not made for me, but this should, should sit up right here. I was gonna show you how to sew these little bows on, but they're kind of a pain. And so you have to just kind of do it the way you think you know how to do it, because that's what I did. Yep. Just and remember to keep it on the outside and not to catch the elastic. And the marking on here for when we sewed it, or when we did our markings for the line, for the, the placement line, was a little square at the top. And yes, I know there may still be some purple marks. I don't know if you can see them, but like that will fade out within the next. Well, now we have what? Forty-eight hours. Yeah, but the, probably within the next forty-eight hours. So here it is. We showed you how to make a Renaissance style, style shirt. It can be worn low like this or up like that. If you're modest. If you're a little bit more on the modest side. Um, but yeah. Stay tuned. We're going to attempt to make a skirt. That shouldn't be too hard. That's the easy part. But we're going to attempt to make this bodice that goes over the top of it. I have no idea where the pattern went. So I can't really show you what it looks like, but if you rewind back to the beginning, it's on the pink one. It's a little vest type thing yep. that goes over the top. We're going to use boning. We'll teach you how to boning. use boning. But first, we're going to show you how to do the skirt. And the skirt, we're going to show you how to put in a zipper. A hook nine and how to do a slip stitch. A slip stitch is uh, hidden from the outside. Kind of difficult and it has to be done by hand. I can do that. Yes you can. So that's it. Tune in next time and we'll be hope to see you again. Bye!